Oh, are you ready to be Munger Vision? This has the potential to be a Donnybrook. The rematch, Twin Valley in the black uniforms taking on West Rutland in the home whites at the Hinchy Gym. And Jim Corbo, Kim Levin the officials, Devin Spurk are gonna jump against Marissa Samirsky and we are underway in a ball controlled by Twin Valley. So the Wildcats in the black uniforms will have Devin Spurka, one of the premier players in the state of Vermont. Out there, number 21. A couple, a matchup of a couple of heavyweight players. Katie Lincoln for West Rutland, of course, Spurka for Twin Valley. Should put the game's first shot up, and it'll be a little bit off the mark. And rebound will be tipped around. It'll be controlled by Twin Valley. They'll go to the floor. The ball will be knocked free. It's Griswold with the steal, and Griswold into the front court. And that pass is going to be stolen away by Twin Valley. That was number 22, Crawford. A couple Crawfords out there. They're twin sisters. So it's going to take me a while to get it down. Well, that shot will drop by Bernard. Yeah, it was a tight ball game down in Wilmington. And a lot of times passed though since. Griswold up short. Rebound was aimed. She came all the way over untouched on the baseline. Lincoln with the grab will spin away from the pressure and give it off to Samirsky. She wants to go baseline. She has that taken away by Crawford to Pease. And Pease will put it on the floor, go up with the left hand. And that was just nicks the rim. And West Rollins uncharacteristically pulling down the offensive rebounds on their first possession. Lincoln three ball on it. No. Coming off a game where she had five three-pointers last night. West Rutland playing back-to-back -back nights now. Griswold on Spurka, that will be the matchup to watch early. Briar Lynn Crawford is 22, and Kylie Blue Crawford is 23. Spurka three ball in it, no. Actually, she caught all air, and she's kind of looking at that. She's trying to get involved in the offense early, and I don't blame her for that. Two nothing, Twin Valley with the lead. And they're going to sub in that 2-3 zone. Of course, they have a very personable, very great basketball coach, Buddy Hayford. 25 will be called for the foul, and that's going to be Alicia Lockney. So Lockney called for the game's first foul, and that will send Brooke Griswold, a senior from West Rutland, to the line to shoot a couple. And she's going to get a little help from that home rim to nurse it up and in, and she'll make it 2-1. Very important for West Rutland State. They want a 10 point game, they want to be up or down 10. They don't want to be blown out early. They have a tendency to lose a lot of intensity when they get that way. Their ideal situation would be ahead by 10, but like I said, this, this got potential to be just a great ball game, or it's got the potential to be a route. Coach Serrani will even tell me he doesn't know what he, he knows what he wants, but doesn't know what's going to happen. So we'll see how this unfolds here. It's, Crawford had knocked away by Pease and Pease. Numbers aren't there. Will she attack? No, she'll get below the paint, kick it back out. Lincoln looking for that three ball and no. Off the back of the rim too hard. And here comes Spurka the other way. And Devin Spurka very smartly realizes the numbers weren't there. Crawford inside to Bernard and no. Weak side rebound will be missed. And Bernard one more time. Got it. I'll tell you what, they're going to have to do something with Sam Bernard because that's a couple different times now she's burned him down the floor on the, on the defensive offensive board. Samirski, all the defense opened up. Samirski, got it. Boy, you wouldn't see that shot from Samirski early in the season. Now she's feeling confident. Lincoln just came around the backside, stole it from Bernard, and she'll give the ball up. There's the kick out and the shot by Griswold. No, rebound, saved. That was a Lockney that saved it back to Spurk on a great play. Crawford, nope, that might have actually been tipped and grabbed by Samirski. He's got a 4-4 ball game and stolen away by Bernard. Spurka, Griswold has drawn the defensive assignment of taking on, or are they going 2-3 zone? No, nope. Griswold's following her out. So they've matched Crawford up with Lincoln. Which is, a, I didn't expect that. There's a bucket by Bernard, 6-4 Twin Valley. Interesting, the defensive scheme of the game just about three and a half minutes old. Here's Griswold, it's a tough pass to handle. She's able to save it along the baseline, send it out to Lincoln. She'll put it up, three ball, and got it! 7-6 West Rutland on Lincoln's first three-point shot. Now that was really a good job of spreading the floor right there, Some, the good balance on the floor by West Rutland. And boy, that pass is never... That's a tough pass to complete, and you know what? They're going to get it back. Lockney to Spurka. Griswold stayed back on it, and this is Crawford. Spurka open, and still looking for that first shot to drop for it. Pass is tipped, gets to Katie Lincoln. Lincoln. 
Yeah, and some pressure from behind, got peas down in the paint and got fouled. Beautiful. Beautiful. Kim Levins will make the call. And that is one of the Crawfords, that's Briar Lynn Crawford. And that's going to be the second foul on Twin Valley. First on Crawford and Pease at the line, the senior for West Rutland as they start. Five seniors and Pease will be off the mark. 7 6, West Side with the lead. All oh, we're early in this one. Settle in. He's, he's turned over the last several years into quite the matchup between non conference opponents. Oh, I remember the night that West Rutland, Hughes was still the guard, Melissa. They had Bowen, Dunches, that whole group that won the championship. The night they knew they come with their travel, they came of age when they upset. And I mean, it was a great atmosphere. They upset Twin Valley that night. Twin Valley at the time, might have even been undefeated at the time. Sperka walking it down. 8-6 West Side, 3.28 to go in the first quarter playing at. Westside squad's gone to a 2-3 zone now, so they've switched up. Let's see how this will favor or not favor him. Bernard open, missed a shot. Rebound will come down to Crawford, and she'll gather it in the corner, toss over the top, and that's going to be a nice grab by Sam Bernard. Oh, they flash lock, and she was open, and they didn't get her the basketball. Spricker will back it out, and they'll just reset the offense. Coach Carl Serrani built quite the program here at Westside. And jump ball, Ames got in there and tied it up. It's going to be West Rowland basketball. And no pressure in the backcourt being applied by Twin Valley. Griswold, now she likes to take it to the hole this year. She hasn't, well, that's her first drive. We've got a foul call. I believe it's going to be a hand check. We'll see what Jim calls. It's on Twin Valley. Push. Jim Corbel, Kim Levins. Working the ball game tonight. The strike says Lincoln has to slide over Ted, and she will. The piece open, pass up the shot. We'll go to Griswold. So stand outside the elbow. That was made for Lincoln and takes the shot. Was open. A good defense from behind by Crawford. And now here comes Devin Spurka. Spurka's missed her first three shots. But I'll tell you, she's the kind of person that there's a foul on Lincoln. Yeah. That uh, when Spurka gets her range, she can rip off seven, eight shots in a row. Made shots. And that ball brought in by Crawford. Crawford's, I check our sisters. Up and no. Tipped around and Samirsky will be tied up. And it's going to be Twin Valley basketball. Tell you what, it's a long drive for Twin Valley, but they brought quite the fan base, quite the contingent of people here. Then there's, of course, your West Rutland groups, always supported by their school, their teams here. But there's a lot of neutral people here that just came to watch the match between Twin Valley and West Rutland. No. Rebound comes down hard and Look at the quick hands by Lincoln. She traveled. She got traveled. Yeah. Now that's a great call. That's a good call. Eight six still, and I tell you what, it's been a battle out there. There's real estate's tough to find open out there right now. And well, it's tell you what, both schools' coaches pride themselves on defense. And an eight six score. I think you see that Spurka got it. First three for Spurka, and I like what she did. She just kept shooting. Don't get down, don't get discouraged, don't go into a turtle shell and stop shooting. Griswold trying to answer, he'll come back, and Griswold just off the mark. Lincoln, oh, had it, lost it off her hands, almost like a frozen motion. Lockney got the basketball, 9-8 Twin Valley, and there's a pass up ahead to Bernard. They're going to post her up, and I like that. that she, she's already, obviously, a very tough matchup for West Rutland. 11 8 Twin Valley with their largest lead of the ball game so far. There's Ames in, short, short armed it, yeah. Felt the defense coming over and pulled the shot back. 121 to go in the first quarter. Oh, what a tremendous pass. She put that between two defenders. Griswold now as they go back on that edge with Griswold. And yeah, nice job. Oh, they got a foul. It's Lincoln, it's number two, and that's big. No, it'll be Brooke Griswold called for the foul. And that is the second personal foul on West Rutland. First on Griswold. Spurka. Oh, they left her on the edge pretty soft. Now Griswold will come out and defend. One minute to go. And what's been a very tense, almost play-like, playoff-like tension in this ballgame. 
Crawford, no. And there's a good box up by Samirski, and she'll snap the pass out to Lincoln. Pease, open, got it, no. Boy, bless that one. They've had a couple bunnies and give me they haven't canned them, and those come back to get you in big ball games. I mean, they pushed the ball, they got the shot they wanted, they didn't convert it. Bernard picks it out, and they want to roll it baseline. There's the cut by Bernard, pass, tip is back to Spurka, up and got it. Oh, what did I tell you? Devin Spurka, back-to-back -back threes, and it makes it a 14-8 Twin Valley lead, 19 seconds to go in the quarter. Griswold will take the bump up underneath, go in the line to shoot a couple. You know, the defense hasn't rotated that all on the baseline. They bring that play five times now. That's Briar Lynn Crawford. And, ooh, three fouls. That snuck up. That's three fouls on Briar Lynn Crawford for Twin Valley. And that's going to bring Brittany Poland into the ball game. Wearing 20 in black. As Crawford will sit down with three fouls. And Griswold. Trying to salvage one here. And nope, should be off the mark. Nice box out by Lochte. 13 seconds to go. It's Twin Valley going in this first quarter with a little run. They got a six point lead right now. And Spurka, two for her last two attempts at the three point arc. Now they got all that zone defense real quick. They've gone back to man to man. And that's the quarter. And it was a good one. 14 6 Twin Valley over West Rutland. First quarter action on Munger Vision. Now we'll see what adjustments have been made by both coaches as they've had one quarter under their belt. There's a good quarter basketball. West Rutland worked hard, got some good opportunities, didn't capitalize on them. Twin Valley went to a lot of their strengths. The inside game of Bernard, the outside shooting of Spurka. Well, one stat that did surprise me a little bit was the ability of West Rutland to offensive rebound in that first half, the first quarter. Like that, I mean, they kept the ball alive. It will be Twin Valley basketball, but a good job by Westside keeping that offensive rebound alive. 7.47 to 13 seconds into the second quarter. And some pressure now, slight pressure. Not the trap, not the zone trap, not the man up. There's Griswold with the one fall. Works against Spurka, knocked away by Lincoln. And here's Griswold. Puts the ball on the floor, and there's the pass up ahead. Some mercy, contact, shot, count it! They're gonna count the bucket, she's going to the line for the and one. Again, that time they took advantage of capitalized on it. Got the good push down the floor, as they will have. That's uh, Brett Akis coming in, number 13. So Akis in the ball game for Twin Valley. She saw some action in the JV basketball game. And now we'll go. Samirski, like I said, as the season's progressed, she's progressed. She's gotten more confident. She's taking more shots. She's feeling good about what she's doing out there. And no, it's halfway down, pops back out. There's a rebound taken by, by Lockney to Crawford, and they'll go back to Spurka. Griswold got a tough job tonight. She's very focused out there, though, Griswold is. And we've got a push called, I believe, on Pease. Or is it a kick? Nope, no foul at all. Defensive kick on the ball. And Spurka just pops free. A 14-11 score, one minute into the second quarter. What a move. And then the pass, not handled. Bernard got it up and in. Oh, what a, what a creative move by Bernard. Lincoln through the double team, gave it off to Griswold. They go inside the piece. She'll make the grab, step, and be able to get the basketball back. Griswold shoots short. Pease up, got it. Another West Rutland offensive rebound. Now, they're not a team that usually rebounds that well. When I watch the games, I don't get that impression, but they're doing well here in the first half. 16-13, Twin Valley. Lockney will get the ball up on his side, and Akis to Crawford, Crawford. Smirsky's got the matchup with Bernard down inside, and that's it. I like the way she plays. Not playing from behind, not fronting her. You know, swing it around, Akis now wanted baseline. Spurka had it taken away by Griswold. And Griswold will go up and miss it. There's the rebound, up, miss it. And last touch by Spurka. Okay, count those chances. They had two layups, two bunnies, and they missed them. Those, you've got to start. I'm trying to get a game I just did. Oh, Otter Valley, no River Girls. Otter Valley missed a ton of bunnies and layups in the first half. They ended up losing it by, I think, seven, five or seven points at the end. Aims to Lincoln, first step, baseline's there. Lockney, seal her off, she'll roll the ball back. 
to Ames, and now Samurski with a tough catch. Boy, their spacing's off on this play, and it's going to be West Rutland basketball. Yeah, they just didn't get comfortable offensively. They were just, first of all, a great defense by Twin Valley. But the spacing condensed, and that caught the defense all in, too. Ames pass up the shot. Lincoln won't. She'll take it and be long and strong. Another offensive rebound. Why well, haven't had a game in a long time. I said that about West Rutland. Lincoln catches, can't make the clean grab. We'll go to Samurski, she'll put it up, and boy, ah, oh, foul. Yeah, now on the floor, Pease with a good block out, box out. And that's all of a sudden six fouls now as a team. Akis will pick up, Akis will pick up the foul, and it's not the one and one, it's just a 16 foul. 16-13, Twin Valley. And it, this is this has been just a tension-filled ball game. This feels just like a, a playoff game. Somebody's going to go home eliminated. Pease catches on the dribble, gives up the ball to Ames. She'll catch fire. No, just the fact she shot. I like it. Tell you what, they're not giving Lincoln too much space to work with. Oh, Amanda Ames gets it this time. We're tied at 16, and it's very obvious that Twin Valley's defensive game plan is to take Lincoln and smother her. Don't let her touch the ball. Don't, and she does. Don't let her get a shot off. And they're getting some good support from other areas offensively. Talking about West Rutland. Five second count, Griswold doing a great job on Spurka here in the first half. We slide out, and Mrs. Mersky has to slide down about five feet. She will accommodate Jim Corbo. Now Lincoln's got that one three point shot. Other than that, she hasn't had any open looks. The floor is spread, there's the ball fake, there's the slash to the hole, boy. Got her own missed shot, put it on the floor and it's taken away. We got a travel call. Yeah, Akers called for the travel. But again, Griswold sold the ball fake, took it to the hole. Could have easily been a foul call, but that's okay. 16 all, West Side looking for their second lead of the ball game. They need some movement and nothing happened inside. They popped the ball between circles to Gr Griswold. Ames catches, fires, no. And jump ball, and it'll be Twin Valley basketball. Bernard tied up with Samurski. It's going to be Crawford on the baseline, on the inline, actually. A little pressure again, but just to walk the ball down with Spurka. Griswold with the one fall with 4.37 to go. It would be a crossing on the cake if Griswold can get through this first half and not pick up that second fall. Bernard up top this time on the high post. We'll give it down to Spurka. She'll stand on the wing. Puts it up and no. Look at the offensive rebound this way. Lockney got it. Lockney with the bucket going to the line. So that is Pease that picks up the foul. And we haven't seen it. no substitution for Coach Serrani's squad halfway through the second quarter. The whole first quarter and halfway through the second. 18-16, lock me up. We'll stay 18-16. Spurka will step to the hole. No. One more time. Leans in. Tell you, she has been off tonight. Early on here. Lincoln, she's got some space now. And she'll go up underneath. And a defense on that side. It was Bernard, I believe. Yeah, number 15. Lockney was there also. And Spurka with the basketball. Lincoln can't get frustrated and chase defensively. There's a steal by Ames. Up to Lincoln, between the two defenders, up and fouled. Now Katie Lincoln will go to the line as Crawford will pick up the foul. As Kylie Blue Crawford. And Katie Lincoln at the line. Now West Rutland as a team, just about 50%, which isn't good. That's an area that really, in tight ball games, has hurt them. And Samurski will be the first Golden Horde player taking a break as Tiffany Ponto, number 13, comes in for West Rutland. Lincoln will get one and two and cut the lead to one, 18-17 Twin Valley. Berka herself has not come out of the ball game yet either. She's got six points in the basketball game, a couple threes. Crawford holds as Lozito in the ball game, Shannon Lozito, number 10. Now she saw some action in the JV ball game, so she's got limited quarters here in this ball game. Spurka up, clean catch, shot, no good. Rebound, Ponto, and Lincoln now will have the basketball. Good job by Ponto on the defensive boards. Lincoln met by Lozito, top of the arc. Ames steps into it and gets it. 
1818 West Side. That's the second lead change of the first half. We've had a tie and two lead changes, and it's been tight. See Lazita hold the ball, and Lincoln's on top with her. Ains popped out with Crawford, and they're going to work the baseline. No help on the baseline, and Spurka again. Very uncharacteristic, Devin Spurka off tonight, shooting here in the first half. She sold the ball fake, got the baseline, and just pounded it off the glass. Griswold with the catch, had to lean out for it. Let the defender set, go by, shot on the run, no good. Rebound Bernard, 2.41 to go in what's been a blistering first half of basketball from the Hinchy Gym on Munger Vision. PakeTV.com, that's the place to go on the internet and click Video On Demand. You can watch all Munger Vision games on that website. Lincoln doesn't want that second foul, and she got caught reaching there almost. Great entry pass, there's the help defense, and great help by Ames. Jump ball, Lincoln got there. Ames made it possible though, and that defense rotated around like just like they draw it up on a chalkboard. Oh, it's all about defense in this one. I'll tell you what, Mercy after a very brief rest, is gonna come in for peas. And no, she is not, Griswold is gonna come out. What a first half by Brooke Griswold. She's done it defensively out there on Spurka. There's the crossover past Lazito, and they'll give it off to Ponto. And boy, just beat Spurka to the ball. Pease steps out on the elbow, and the throw away across to Ames. Rolls the pass to Lincoln. Playing tight right now. There's the cut inside by Samersky up, and no. What a great cut, though. Great pass, also. 19-18 West Side, and Spurka and company with just a pad under two minutes to go here. Twin Valley in the black uniforms. And West Rowan, it's become quite the rivalry. Well, I gotta believe Twin Valley is a target on everybody's schedule because they are one of the elite teams and programs. And yet, Bernard called for the illegal screen. And the only person in foul trouble is Briar Lynn Crawford. She has three personal fouls. That's two fouls now on Bernard. That is big. Bernard has been quite an offensive weapon out there for Twin Valley. Lincoln kicks it out, open his Ames, got it! Ames with four points now, all from long range, just inside the arc, the west side. Again, matches their largest lead of the ball game at 21-18. 1.21 to go. Oh, you live to call games like this. This is a great game, there you go. Crawford will cut it to a one point lead for West Rutland, 21-20. Keys, pivots. And then gets the ball off to Lincoln. Catchy shoots. No. Look at the rebound. Look at the rebound by Wes Rutland in this first half. Ponto with the offensive rebound and the putback. 23-20, a minute to go. West Rutland, second quarter action. Oh, I can't wait to see what Coach Crawford does for an adjustment on the boards. That goes through Lazito's hands. And Lincoln stepped out of bounds. Yes, good call by Jim Corbell. No, it's been a very well officiated ball game. Yeah, so, so Lazito to Spurka. So Mercy's going to draw Spurka now that Griswold is on the bench. So they kind of hedged off on her. That's going to be Crawford. No. Lazito got it. Oh, the smallest player on the floor. Made the niftiest move to get the rebound and put it up and in. 23-22 West Rutland. And that pass will be tipped out of bounds. I believe one off Bernard. Yeah, and Samersky will take the ball out of bounds. Personally, I thought it was the right call, but I could have understood if they called it the other way, possession-wise. 17 seconds, 16 seconds, Lincoln. No, comes off. Just a short rebound to the left side, and Twin Valley looking to go to the locker room with the lead. They're down by one with seven seconds. Bernard, there's the kick out. Baseline, Lazito, no. Rebound slapped out of bounds by Lockney. West Rollin will have 1.8 seconds. And they're going to put press mode on. I, thought, I was hoping that as a coach, he would do that. Yeah, with that 1.8, you want him to catch, bring the ball for momentum and launch those long shots. Yeah, hold it. And West Rutland's going to go to the locker room with a 23-22 lead over powerful Twin Valley on Mungerbinson. Basketball, we get this, this third quarter underway. This is always the first two or three minutes are most interesting because you want to see the changes. Now, how, how did Coach Crawford adjust what Coach Schrani did, vice versa, 
Uh, Coach Randy, I, go, I was just chatting very briefly and between the halftime here. And the only thing that surprised him was the 1-3-1 zone that Coach Crawford pulled out during that first half of play because he didn't see that down in Wilmington in the first game. Didn't expect it here the second game. And I'm sure there's a lot that Coach Crawford has drawn up some X's and O's for us. Very well prepared. Both teams locking, got away a little travel. She'll kick it out and on the baseline drive, Lincoln and P is able to seal it off. Bernard will bring it up and boy, I tell you, she got inside and then they gave up the easy shot. She missed it, ball will be on the floor. Lincoln will have it and she traveled. Yeah, she got up, meant to get up. It's gonna be travel. So Twin Valley will get another possession here in the third quarter. 23-22 West Rutland with the lead. Again, it's the premier game tonight in the state of Vermont, and you got it right here on Munger Vision. Oh, yeah, I'm the only guy broadcasting tonight here. Yep. Got it! That was Crawford with a free ball. Twin Valley will take the lead back. And they're going to go now with the press in the backcourt. To the middle of the floor, the pass got tipped, still got the Griswold. It's now it's a matter of West Rutland's composure. Look at Griswold do it! 25 all! Lincoln with a great play. It'll be Queen Valley basketball, but just a tremendous play to get up, make up a ton of ground, knock the ball away, and let her defense get set up now. Oh, there's been a lot of changes in the first one minute already done by the coaching staffs on both sides, or the coaches on both sides. T. Crawford sealed off to her and back to Spurka. It's a defense spot. Spurka, so she hit a couple threes. What happened right there is Bernard dribbled it out of bounds on the baseline. Brooke hit a couple threes in the first half, but if I had a statistician, I think you'd find her to be shooting like two for eight or two for seven on her shots. Pease with the grab. They broke the press, no problem. They're going to go to Griswold. Griswold and Smirsky seem to be the key here tonight. If Lincoln is the focus of their defense right now, and she's getting a lot of support from her teammates. That shot off by Ames will stay tied at 25. Spurka. Beautiful pass, Lockney let it go through her hands. Yeah, they had the baseline, it was a perfect pass. And a lot of juice on it, she couldn't handle it. Lincoln with some contact. Pease got behind the defense, puts it up and got it. Oh, that shouldn't happen. Not to a veteran team like Twin Valley. Let's well, probably able to hit the home run pass and then Griswold doesn't want to get caught reaching. She's done a beautiful job defensively in the first half. She's only got the one foul Griswold does. And boy, Smirsky just don't, don't reach, but she almost got the steal. Griswold didn't want to overcommit. So you're kind of hedged toward the left, yeah. Travel called on Spurka. Oh, she had nowhere to go with the ball. That's the frustration she feels. The defense is a ruling tonight in the Hinchy Gym. This is a clinic right here for the coaching staff. Got a couple, first of all, you got a couple good coaches in Cherani and Hayford. Look at that pass inside. Stripped and oh, Samirsky hard to the floor and she's gonna pop right back up. Well, she's gonna walk it off. I think it was her elbow I heard smack. And we're gonna have a timeout taken. If it wasn't a jump ball, like did they put the hand on the ball? And it wasn't a play, just a play. Oh, okay, so it's going to be Coach Randy wanting a timeout. He wants to where the ball's going to be taken out of bounds. Okay, so it'll be West Rutland basketball. Oh, it's going to be Twin Valley basketball. Well, see, I disagree with that whole call. It's either a foul or a jump ball. Well, maybe they want possession here. Okay, so it's white basketball. I, I was trying to understand how it could become black basketball, but... Guess we'll live with the call because West Rutland got it. Lincoln puts a shot up that was partially tipped. They'll come down to Samirsky and another offensive rebound and put back. That's one area that I thought was really surprising to me and it was a key was the offensive rebounds by West Rutland as they had a superior edge in that statistic in the first half. And their team, it doesn't do that. They don't rebound well. Spurka got by her, count it. Yep. Griswold just picked up ball number two with 513 to go in the third quarter. Well, I gotta tell you too, I mean, he's dropping on Coach Hayford's huddles here. And he's been, I don't wanna say begging, but he's been pleading with Spurka to drive to the hole. And that time she did, she got the basket and the foul. As good as Griswold is, Spurka still, I'm gonna give her a two, uh, three inch height advantage over Griswold. The free throw off, Samirsky with the rebound, she'll go to peace, and now in the hands of Griswold. 29 27. 
Wes Rutland. Ames pass up the shot this time. Got it to Griswold to Lincoln. She's open on the edge and got it. One of the rare times she's had space to get the shot up and she made him pay for it with her second three of the night. 32 27 West Rutland with their largest lead of the game. Lincoln flat through, almost got the steal, steps to the hole. Got it. Good composure. Crawford with the bucket. That was just good composure right there by Twin Valley. Yeah, they're going to set up in the triangle defense. I love that defense. Griswold will rim out, but Lincoln will get the offensive rebound. That's the only thing about playing that triangle down and low. It's two up top in the triangle. Foul is going to be on Lockney. Samurski's going to the line to shoot a couple. And it's just what the defense called. Somebody's you're trying to you build it from the top of the freeze line, and then somebody one on each side down the blocks, and you two float on top. You're free from a freelance. That'll be short. And again, not to pound the statistic home. As a team, West Shelton's only around 50% free throw shooters. That's already got them a couple times this year. So Merce, we'll get one or two, it'll be 33-29. Sperka with some company in the backcourt. Griswold just shadowing her up the floor. Now she's going to need help on the baseline if she's going to want to take note. There you go, right to the baseline, up and no. Rebound controlled by Lockney up and it's going to be tipped to the end. Crawford was there and I believe West Rutland will get the basketball. Well, you can see that play being set up to roll to the baseline and they had no help rotate over. It was just a missed shot. Everything worked except the shot. It was a perfect play call. Griswold on the drive, pulled it down, stepped inside, gave it back to P. She'll take a few dribbles to the elbow and then hand it off to Lincoln. Lincoln inside to Samersky, blocked again by Lockney and a whistle up top by Coach Levins. And that's a big foul. That's going to be two fouls in a row now on Lockney and Samersky on the line. It's three fouls in total on Lockney. She came across the arm and got the ball. So it was with the body. Samurski will get the first free throw this time. Trying to, trying to go three or four from the line on this one. No. So again, she made one, missed one. Last time she missed one, made one. So she's at 50%, just like the team. 34, 29, they're trying to hand the ball to Sperka. Got and they're gonna pull off now. Griswold. On the Spurk, on Devin Spurka defensively. That's where they need to help. Yeah, nice job by Lincoln. Shot up, no. Rebound, boxed out, Samurski. Tell you what, that's there for the taking. Right now, North Rutland's defense is not set up for the drive by Spurka as far as the rotation. That's going to be off the mark, and Samurski went up and got it. It's going to be taken out right here. Jump ball, West Rutland basketball. Lockton ended up with the ball, but it possessed long enough to be called a jump ball. Griswold, oh, she had a chance to go through the seam. There it is. She saw it, the pass tipped and taken away. Nice play by Bernard, that's good defense. Well, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't. It was there early and they were just late getting the ball there and Pease just picked up ball number two as Lockney will be fouled. I believe that's just two. Yes, it is, well, I don't say just, but it is two fouls on Pease. 3.07 to go in the third quarter. 34-29 West Rutland over Twin Valley. Bernard with a great position. Yep, jump hook, no good. Bernard went to get it, and it goes off from Bernard's hands out of bounds. Bernard with a great effort, getting up a little bit slow, but I think she's gonna be okay. Yep. She literally went airborne through two people. And that's how the ball went off from her hands. Oh, I tell ya, I saw this game on the schedule way back in November when I got my schedule. And I knew this was going to be a dandy. Lincoln, no. They designed that whole play to get to her. Last touch by Bernard. It's going to be white basketball. Samurski, pass to Ames. Ames looking for a third basket. Nope. Was lined up, just didn't knock it down. And here comes Spurka. 2.38 to go, third quarter. Berka, there's the drive, there's the kick out, and there's the missed shot. And it's going to be a good bounce for West Rutland. Sometimes you got to have luck, and they did on that rebound. Pease will get in the hand of Brooke Griswold, another senior out there for West Rutland. 
Les Felton, a team that went to the finals last year, lost in a classic epic ball game. 215, and again, got the ball in low. Look at the play by Griswold on the top of the defense. She's got a two on one. She's going to take it up and didn't get the foul. Didn't get the. There you go. It wasn't a foul on Stricker the first time, but Lincoln hustled the floor, got the offensive rebound, went up and got fouled. 23, that'll be Crawford. Yep, Crawford called for her second foul. Kylie Blue Crawford called for the foul. And Katie Lincoln. Up and got it. As Ponto coming in for Pease, like the first half substitution, Ponto came in and did a good job. And I see number 14, Molnar, Abby Molnar, who played in the JV game earlier tonight, out there for Twin Valley. And it's saved by Bernard. She's able to tip it to the baseline and pick it all up. Two minutes to go in the third quarter, 35 29, West Rutland. Oh, how far they have come in this whole new scheme. Look at Sperka, got the baseline, and Griswold did the best thing she could do. She pulled off, didn't want to get the foul. She conceded the baseline, and Sperka continues her cold shooting. Griswold's going to take it hard to the hole, look for the finish. Get it, Griswold! Oh, she's been doing that a lot this year. We're going to have a timeout taken by Twin Valley. Where's Brooke? There she is. Playing the best game of the season I've seen here, doing it defensively and offensively. It's West Side 37 29 over Twin Valley. Yeah, you can see Crawford, Spurka in the backcourt. West Shelton with a change up defensively. They're coming out with a different look right now. Oh, I tell you, Crawford. Smirsky, I believe, is going to get the foul. Yeah, Smirsky got the hold call. And uh, even before the foul occurred, the wing had released and was wide open for a bunny shot or a layup. And they never looked behind them. Time about Twin Valley. And so get the ball in Molnar with the catch. Bernard, there's a steal in, and Sperka will take it back. Griswell almost had the ball secured. Bernard, that shot was tipped and comes down in the hands of Samersky. And a foul call. Great action tonight from the Hinchy Gym. And it's brought to you by Munger Vision. And it's going to be on Peg TV Channel 15. And you go to pegtv.com. Click video on demand. You can tune in Saturday afternoons at 4 o'clock. Sunday mornings at 8 o'clock. And you can watch sports on channel 15 almost every night after nine o'clock at night and this is a good one tonight look at that play by Crawford on the steal traveled she did a great job but making the steal battling up for it and then she traveled yeah they got the press breaker Heidi Byrne is checking the ball game I missed that for West Strong Heidi Byrne in the basketball game Lincoln able to just spin out of the trap and come right up the sideline Fake the pass, goes inside, great give, and got it. What a pass by Lincoln. Ponto with the finish, and it's a 10-point West Rutland lead. Oh, there's a long way to go in this ballgame. There's the cut, the release, and the block by Pano. She got all ball on it. So I'll tell you what, this has been everybody contributing tonight. Byrne lines it up, no. Rebound, Ames had it, lost it. Spurk it with the basketball. 29 seconds to go in the quarter. Spurk a three ball on it. No. And I'll tell you, frustrated with the efforts tonight by the, the defense, just smothering out Spurk. But I'll tell you, she's a fourth quarter player. Fern coming back. And oh, that had trouble written over it. Yep, they'll turn the ball over with 19 seconds to go. West Shelton's done an excellent job tonight of not turning the ball over. I think that's only their fifth turnover. Unofficially. 18, 17, 16, and Byrne is on Spurka. They have Lincoln out on Crawford. There's a screen set for Crawford. Now they want to go to Bernard and she was covered by Samersky and there's a, oh, big foul call. Good call, it's a good call. That puts it at 14 fouls. Two fouls on Lincoln. Spurka being hand checked, no call, goes around the defense and missed the shot. Spurka is so snake bitten. But beware the fourth quarter, that's when your great players come to shine. But right now it's just a great team effort by West Rutland as they've got the 39 29 lead over Twin Valley heading into the fourth quarter play.
Kaminsky will start the fourth quarter on the bench for West Rutland as they go with Griswold, Lincoln, Ames, Ponto, and Pease. It'll be Twin Valley basketball. Again, like I said, a couple premier teams matching up. Different divisions. Of course, West Rutland number is in Division 4 and Twin Valley in Division 3. They're right off oh, Crawford. The dribble came up on her. They will control it. Spurka trying to push the ball inside. Picked up by Bernard. She'll step to the hole and she got fouled. Now it's just a matter of who's the foul on. A lot of West Rutland people. Lincoln just picked up foul number three. And Coach Randy telling him to stop reaching right now. So that's three fouls. She picked up the last two back to back. And Bernard will knock it down. That's another one. It's a 15 foul. It's 39-30 West Rutland. 39-31 West Rutland. And Lincoln able to circle back, get the basketball. It's going to be Crawford on her defensively. Lincoln showed her the ball and brought it back. And goes all the way up and can't get the finish. Katie's kind of done that this year. She's made great drives and then had trouble with the finish at the end. I thought she got to learn to dunk the ball. Missed opportunities when we talked about them in the beginning of the, of the game. West Rutland missed a bunch of bunnies early. Thought they need some help on that baseline. Ames started to slide. Now they're going to hand the ball off to Sprick. And Griswold went below the screen. Crawford, three ball in the open. No. And he touched the last, I believe, it's staying down this end of the floor with Twin Valley. And that is the call from Jim Corbo. It's both Crawfords on the floor right now. This is Kylie Blue Crawford into Bernard. And Sam Bernard will make the grab and Ponto on her defensively. Travel. Just great defense. They wanted to go to Spurka and they had Lincoln up top just denying her the basketball. Now they need some help bringing it back to the basketball. Pease made herself available for the pass. Actually, they had doubled on Lincoln. That's why Pease was open. Pease to Ames, back to Pease. Turn, wanted to shoot, wasn't there. Ames catches, fires, got it! Ames with a three-pointer! With a defender in her face! She's got seven on the night, and almost a steal right there. Crawford, travel, didn't call it. Crawford to Crawford, got it. No, missed it. Boy, they missed a lot of shots in close. Bernard able to come out of the pack with the basketball. Spurka, no. Rebound tipped around. Bernard will go to the floor, and Lincoln just picked up foul number four. A lot of time left, 627. Yeah, pivotal moment in the ballgame. Lincoln with four fouls. They're not making the move. She just told the coach she was all right, but I'm looking. And Samersky now to the bench, or to the scores table, and she didn't get in. Oh, I would go right after Lincoln if I was these guys. Spurka got her third three. They've just been so spraced, spread out, the baskets. Lincoln's got to be careful on the drive. Yeah, not getting the charge. He found Spurka. Got her with the body. Blocked. That is the call. And that'll be the first foul on Devin Spurka and the fifth on the team. 42-34, West Rutland. Sometimes two free throws. Aren't their friends, but they'll get that one. Yeah, and they're going to have Samersky coming in for the shooter, Lincoln. Back to a 10-point spread. And Lincoln will sit down at the 622 to play mark with the four fouls. Well, it's been a tremendous team effort tonight by West Rutland. Perka and Griswold have been fun to watch battle each other. Crawford did the catch to go to Lockney. They're trying to post up Spurka, and there's the pass. Griswold. Martley laid off her, then taps the ball back to Samersky. There was no foul. They want contact on when Wilmington wasn't there. Up and got a piece with a great finish on that. 12 point West Rutland lead. And Spurka has. She's going to see Brooke Griswold in her nightmares tonight with the defense Griswold has played. Lockney popped up. I'm surprised they haven't tried to go to another source, like post up Lockney. But they've stuck with Spurka. Well, you, you, you ride the horse that brung you, I guess is the old saying. 
Well, the cut on the wing was in there. It was covered, and Bernard goes through the hole. Lockney almost got the five-second count. Griswold almost overcommitted. We'll palm it down now. No shot clock to work or worry about in the state of Vermont. Up foul. Ames will pick up the foul, and shots coming up for Crawford. Yeah, she doesn't go for the shot block. It was just too tough an angle to actually do. It was almost going to be an impossible shot to make, but she fouled her, being aggressive. That's good. Crawford will miss the first. Stops the clock with 5.15 to go. 12 point west side lead. First foul on Ames and the shot up and both no good. And Bob will be tipped around and it's going to be a jump ball. West Rutland basketball. Samirski will tie up Lochte and west side will take over. They have out hustled. Twin Valley to all these loose balls. It's just a soccer game. You'd say they've won the 50-50 balls and they've owned the offensive boards tonight. You don't get to say that enough. 46, 34, 5, 13 to go in the fourth quarter. West side with the lead. Huh, like I told you, I live for ball game like this. I mean, I look on that schedule and I hope it in five second quick, five second count. Samirski couldn't get the ball in bounds and now you always look for a turning point, too. Is that the turning point in the ball game? Lincoln's on the bench with four fouls. They had a five-second call against them. And we've got Lockney with a push from behind. And that's just, West Rutland will play you physical. And I, and I like what we've seen. It's been a very good game, but they've stood there and not flinched at the punches they've been taken by Twin Valley. Boy, without Lincoln, without Lincoln, oh, they're having a big problem. Yep. We're getting the getting the ball in bounds is the problem right now. Keys, they want to get the ball in the hands of Griswold and Sperka. There's the trap, and there they go to Griswold. She'll go baseline now, up and got it, Griswold on the seat of her pants. After we'll get up and hustle down the floor, up ahead to Bernard and knocked it on the rim. Again, another chance slips away for Twin Valley. Samirski feeling it, goes up, no. Rebound, kept alive, jump ball, Twin Valley basketball. Lincoln going to be coming back in now with 4.38 to go. Four falls and all, she's coming back in the ball game. Ponto coming out, solid effort off the bench by Ponto. Sperka and Griswold, I, and I just tell you what a devastatingly good job Griswold has done on Sperka tonight. They need the help. Crawford pulls up. Got it? No. Rebound up. No. They're rushing their shots. Bernard fouled. Samirski, I believe, is going to get it. Samirski will pick up her third. No, her second. And Bernard will go to the line, but it'll stop the clock with 4.21 to go in the fourth quarter. 48-36. West Rutland and got it. 48-37 now on the made free throw. Oh, great ball game tonight. Got to get out to a hinchy gym and watch the game live. Then go home and watch it again on Channel 15. See how Lincoln's able to get back. Got the ball in bounds. Griswold, contact, offense. You knew it was coming. I think it was a good call. I'm a big Griswold fan, but I think it was a good call. Yep. That is the 19th foul. It's a player control foul, so there's no shots coming up. Ten-point ball game, and that's the third foul on Griswold. Griswold snuck around and almost made the steal. Yeah, they're doubling Sperka right now. And see, she's got that ability like Lincoln to somehow gets open. Yeah, and a fourth ball on Griswold would be tremendously bad right now. Off the window and in! Crawford banks it off the glass and in. Lincoln tiptoeing and Able to get the back pass back to Samirski. It's, this isn't pretty. No, nope, it had trouble written all over it. Hey, I don't know what the timeout situation is. But if he's got them, he should spend one right now. They're lose, losing their composure. 48-41. Twin Valley looking to cut into that seven-point deficit. 3.47 to go in the basketball game. It's going to be like three hours and 47 minutes, so for the West Rutland fans. A oh, great ball fake. No finish, though. So Sperka's had that problem all night. It's going to be off from Sperka out of bounds to West Rutland. Tell you, 
I've seen Spurker play flawless ball games, unstoppable. Tonight, a lot has to do with the West Rutland defense, but she just hasn't had it. There's the takeaway. Up to Spurker. Got it this time. Leads down to five, and there's the timeout. It's going to be a full timeout taken by Coach Sriani. The lead shrunk to five, 48-43, West Rutland. You just, you plan, you scheme, you, you strategize, and then these intangibles come at you. West Rutland's Brooke Griswold had to leave the huddle and go because she had a contact lens rolled up in her eyes. So she's not available right now, and she's a big part of this. Aims up, and no good. Tipped around, settle it down. Well, they're gonna shoot it. No. Ponto will grab it, and it's gonna be West Rutland basketball. They gotta get organized. That's what Coach Rainey's telling them right now, that you have to get organized. No sign of Griswold still. They said, okay, she's back there. There she is. And she just told Coach Rainey she can see now. She's okay. But West Rutland, they're seniors, but they can't play afraid to win here. They gotta stay aggressive and confident. Pano will take the one dribble and give the ball to Lincoln. Up underneath, no. Everybody on the boards, and it will come back to Spurka. They're on a 7-0 run right now, Twin Valley is. They're down by 12, they're down to five right now. They gotta come out on the edge defensively. Spurka is gonna be played by Ponto to the hole. Got it this time. And the lead all the way down to three. The numbers are there for West Rutland. They'll give it on the wing, back into the hands of Lincoln. I, that's a hand check. It's a seventh foul to one and one. Crawford will pick up the foul. Briar Lynn Crawford. And Griswold back in the ballgame now for Ponto. No, West Rutland has gone almost intimidated by the situation here in the fourth quarter. They had a 12 point lead. Twin Valley made a little run, put some pressure on defensively, started battling on the boards. And there's that bugaboo. The missed free throw, 50% free throw team. 12 to go in the fourth quarter. LeBron. With a tie. Got it! They're tied at 48. It's a 12 nothing run. And an elbow call on Crawford. And it's five fouls on Crawford. I gotta get the right Crawford. This is Briar Lynn Crawford. And that will bring Akus into the ball game. So Lincoln, still the one and one. It's only the 18th ball. Oh no, it's, it's tough to win championships with a 50% free throw as a team. 49-48 West Rutland, that's their first basket. Like I said, it's a 12-0 run. And she'll miss it. No, Lincoln's got those four falls. Yep, gotta stop the reaches. And under a minute, under two minutes to go, 156. For the lead, Crawford rims out on her. Rebound, Bernard, jump hook, no good, batted around, up, and no. They've had a ton of chances on the collision. The ball got a bounce. White, no uh, black basketball went out from Amanda Ames of West Rutland. Bernard says she's okay. She took the contact, and 49 48. We're going to have a timeout taken by Twin Valley. Full timeout, 49 48, West Rutland. 142 to go in the fourth quarter, but it's Twin Valley's basketball. Oh, I told you when it was 48-36, West Rutland, that this thing was far from over, and it is. With a minute 42, it's still far from over. Spurka, you would expect her to have the ball. Griswold with two eyes back out there now. She's going to play below the screen. There's a switch off to Pisa. Spurka lost it off her foot on the dribble. You know, you got to credit the defense switching off there. Didn't give her any space to come around comfortably. Lincoln made herself open, got the ball. Now give it off to Griswold. Composure, that's what it's all about in the final minute and a half. Being able to handle the pressure of the defense, the situation, the crowd, the size of the game. It's a big game. Griswold, Spurka on her, she'll duck her in Spurka. Lost the handle and double, oh, travel called. So both teams come out of that timeout, turn the ball over. 1.14 to go. Lincoln and Griswold, they're gonna double Spurka. And she actually lost it off from Spurka. Yeah, 
she actually traveled, but then she lost it off her hands. Box being set up by West Rock. 112 to go. Nice little soft lob pass into Pease. Gets the ball back to Lincoln to throw her the top of Spurk at the Griswold. She's cut off. See the drive? Lincoln, have they got a timeout? She got foul. Crawford called for the foul. Her third. This is a different Crawford. This is Kylie Blue Crawford. Her sister, Briar Lynn, had fouled out already. Griswold. This is the one on one still. This, if you're going to just get over that championship pump, you got to make the free throws. She had it halfway down and popped out. Pease pulled off, wouldn't get the foul. And here comes Spurka. Less than a minute to go, 58 seconds. And a timeout being called by Twin Valley. And I tell you what, if West Rutland loses the ball game, first of all, oh, tremendous what? effort, but they will look back at the missed free throws. That would be the difference in the game. 49, 48, 54 seconds to go West Side trying to hold on for the upset. But I don't believe they would hold for the last shot here. They possibly could, but that's just a lot of time. I always believe the opportunity presents itself, and it's a high-quality shot. You've got to take it. They're going to go back door cut. There's the catch, and it's going to be well defended. West Rutland went to the spot when the pass was in the air. They anticipated. They studied so hard. Griswold will hold. 36 seconds ago, Lincoln with the basketball. Crawford on her defensively. Lincoln will go past her. Inside and got it! Three point game for West Rutland. Spurka. And they want a timeout. They got the ball to midcourt, called the timeout. What a composed play by a very veteran group of West Rutland players. They have the 51 48 lead, but still 21 seconds to go in the basketball game. Play coming in from the chalkboard, dry race board from Coach Hayford was he wants to push the ball inside. I don't think they did that enough tonight. Now he, he asked him and it was in the playbook, but they didn't they didn't actually execute that. Spurka will come back and get the ball. Griswold got get back into play. It's a five on four. See West Rutland trying to get organized defensively. 15 seconds left on the clock. Everybody's shooting foul shots. There's the ball inside. Griswold knocked a free jump ball, Black, or it's going to be Black basketball, Twin Valley basketball. Seven seconds left. Griswold almost came up with a steal. And I'm looking, they, nobody's guarded there. They, go, they didn't have Bernard covered. And timeout taken by Twin Valley. Oh, it's a dandy on Munger Vision tonight. This is beyond a Donnybrook. And they're checking on the timeout. So it's seven seconds left, three point ball game. West side trying to pull off the upset here. I know, I wanna cheer too. Coach Serrani, like I said, he starts five seniors. He's had them all prepared. They've come up through the programs together. They went to the championship game last year. Okay, so Coach Hayford, you got a couple good coaches. See what they come up with here. How can you not like this stuff? You got to get out to a gym. You got to continue to watch Channel 15, but you got to get out to a gym and catch game live. Now I've lost track of the timeouts. If they can't get the ball in bounds, I do think they have one more timeout left. So. Okay, so we're set to go. Seven seconds. Hold on. Spurka had it tipped away. She got it under control. They don't want to follow it for the tie. No. Ball batted around. Up West Rowland has upset Twin Valley. And what's been their best performance of the season? They will upset Twin Valley 51 48. They had a 12 point lead strength to a tie in the fourth quarter, but they were able to find the defense was tremendous tonight. They had all kinds of help in scoring. Brooke Griswold did a devastating job offensively or defensively on Spurka and they were able to get rebounds and Coach Strain right there, hats off to him, great job by both coaches. Good sportsmanship being extended, but a 51-48 West Rutland win over Twin Valley on Munger Vision.